Okay, in this video, we're going to go over onboarding the client. This is the process of getting information from the client after they pay uh, in order to start the project. So this is essentially basic information that we need in order to uh, get started working on the client's SEO or PPC, whatever it may be. Um, so there's basic information that we need to get from them. We want to make that an easy process for the client. We don't want this to be uh, you know, kind of a pain for them. So there are a few ways to do this. I'm going to show you my preferred way here in a second. Um, but you can also use something like Google Forms or Google Sheets. Even a contact form on your WordPress site would suffice. But I prefer using a software called Typeform. And uh, let me go over to that uh, site and show it to you real quick. Okay, so here's the website. And as always, just make sure you check our resources document in case we have a special discounted link for you or a free trial. Uh, we usually can find uh, some of these links for you to sign up with to uh, get you started at a discount. Um, but once you sign up here, you're going to pre uh, be presented with uh, some options to create a type form, which is a very nice and professional looking streamlined process for getting this information from the client. All right, so let me go ahead and log in and show you the dashboard. Okay, so here we are on the dashboard and you can see that we have one option here right now. Once you have new forms, they'll be located uh, right here for you, but we're going to click on new type form. And you have a bunch of templates here. You can start from and look through these if you'd like to uh, use one of those, but I recommend just starting from scratch because we're going to keep this pretty simple and we're still going to use some branding for our company, but we're not going to confuse the uh, the customer, excuse me, the client with a bunch of you know fancy graphics and stuff like that. We're just going to make this a nice streamlined question process. So we're going to start from scratch. Click on that button there, and just let that load up. And we're just going to give this a name. So I'm going to call this client onboarding. And this is information. I don't think you even need to select this, but let's just hit continue and see. Yeah, so that's unnecessary. All right, so to get started, we just we have our edit screen here on the left. I'm just going to orient you to uh, the screen. We have a, this is where you build this. And then the right side is a preview menu of essentially what it looks like on the uh, front end, this is what the client would see. All right, so we're going to add our first question. Click on this plus button. And we're going to click on statement. We're going to uh, just give a little bit of information up front here for the client to uh, direct them on what's coming. So I'm going to type this paragraph out that I use. Uh, feel free to use exactly the same thing, or you can modify it for yourself. So just give me a second here. I'm going to type this up. Okay, so that is the paragraph that I use. Let me just fix some of these typos. Type that up pretty quickly. And I'm going to highlight the five to 10 minutes section and click the B button here for bold. And that is just to let them know that it's gonna take a little bit of time. They shouldn't just do this on a whim. Um, we need them to sit down and take a little bit of time to um, supply us with this information. Uh, the next thing we wanna do here is click on this wrench icon. And this is gonna allow us to uh, add a little more information here. So on the left side, you see we have options. All I'm going to do here is click on image because this is where we want to add our logo just to make it look a little bit more professional. I'm just going to select this image for now just because it's a uh, generic placeholder that they have, but you should add your business logo image there. And then you can see on the live preview side that it appears underneath just like that. So from the client perspective, they see this message first. And then when they click continue, they'll go right to the next question. So in order for us to continue this process, we'll click on this little plus button here for add a new question. And I'm going to select, uh, let's see here, question group down here at the bottom. And then I'm going to label it. Let's begin. 
All right, this just lets them know that we're about to get started. So they'll click continue and then they will move right into the next question, which will be 1A. All right, so let's go ahead and get started with that. First, I need to click on 1A because I'm going to set what type of question this is. So here on the top left section, we'll hit that drop down and I'm going to select email. So let me scroll down and find it. And there's email. And the very first thing I want to know is what email they use during payment, just to confirm it and get our records in order. So I'm going to say confirm the email you use during payment. And just let that load. Sometimes type form a little bit slow to react. All right, so we've got that. And then I'm also going to change this toggle here for required to on. And you can see that there's a little red asterisk just to the left of that question that I put there. And that means that they must answer that question. So there are some of these questions which we need answers to, some which we hope we get answers to, but we, we will not require, so they would be able to skip those. But uh, in this instance, we definitely want to require that for our record keeping. All right, so moving on, we'll click the little plus button here underneath it, and we're gonna go to 1B. And this is also going to be an email field. Uh, so let me find that, here it is. And in this case, I want to find out the business email. It may be very, it may very well be the same one, but we just want to make sure that we cover all our bases here. So I'm going to say, what is the official email of your business? And let that load. And we're also going to require this field as well. So let's go ahead and take that, uh, turn that toggle to yes required. All right. So let's move on and. The next question, so I'll click this little plus icon again. We're going to ask about their Google My Business page. So let me find a, this little bubble is kind of annoying here, but um, it's this one right here. It's a little checkbox above the phone number, multiple choice. And I'm going to ask, do you already have a Google? page. This thing is a little delayed in reacting to how fast I'm typing, but you'll see it pop up here shortly. And then we're going to give a few answers here. And uh, the reason we're doing this is because these choices are actually going to create different conditions for what answer or what question they'll see next. So for the first choice, we're just going to put yes. So let me type that yes. And then to add a new one, we'll hit enter. And second choice is going to be no. And then just to um, make it easier on the client, we put a third choice in here called not sure. And that will just, no and not sure really produces the same result as far as we're concerned. But there are times where the business owner just doesn't know and we don't want them getting confused and then calling you up and asking what they should do here. All right. Uh, so like I said, this is going to create a condition as to what question they see next. But before we do that, we need to actually create the next question so we can create this flow. And this will make more sense as we continue. So for now, just understand that um, this will uh, turn into a nice if then conditional statement. So I'm going to create the next question now. This is going to be uh, a statement right here. All right. And this one is going to say, the will need access to your Google My Business listing. I spelled that wrong, go back. Please watch the video below and complete or link to the next step. All right, just let that catch up there with my typing and I'll fix these typos real fast. Uh, and I want to bold this section here because this is important. So I'll bold that. And what we're going to do now is here on the left side, we're going to add a description. And we are also going to add a video URL. First, for the description, we're going to need uh, we're, we're going to need to list our email address that we want them to add. So this is an email address that you need to create for your Google Analytics. Um, 
for your Google My Business. Essentially, this is your, your main control account where you're going to be managing your clients. Uh, I found that it's easy just to create a Gmail account for this and the name of it can just be your business name. So it could be something like um, your agency name at gmail.com. And actually what I do here is I say, let me practice this with our email to add is, right, and then let me bold this. Something happened, it's weird there. All right, let me do it again. Our email to add is for agency name at gmail.com. All right, so I'm just I'm not sure why it wouldn't let me bold it. Let me see if it does now. Hmm, it's in, that's a strange thing. So let's not worry about that. I'll just keep it. Um, I'll just leave it like that. All right, uh, maybe it lets me bold the first part of it. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, so we'll do that. I don't know why it was acting strange there. Uh, so this is the email that we want them to add um, on our behalf. And once they watch the video, they'll understand where this email comes into play. So you should watch this video as well. And this is a video I created. Um, let me, I'm just gonna get that link real fast here. Give me a second, I'm looking on my other screen and see if I can find the video URL. All right. And essentially what this video does is it instruct, it's a very quick video, about a minute long, and it, and it will instruct the client uh, if they have a Google My Business page. So now, in other words, if they answer yes here, we're going to direct them to this question. If they answer no or not sure, then this question doesn't apply and they're gonna to go to the next one. But for the ones that this does apply, they'll watch this video and then they'll be able to add your email here um, so you can control their Google My Business account, which is important. All right, so the URL is, now again, feel free to use this exact URL if you want to. It's not um, spec uh, specified to any business at all. It's a pretty generic video that you can use directly as is, or if you feel the need to just watch it and make your own, that's also an option. So let me just put this URL in here so you can look at it. So it's y-o-u-t-u dot b-e slash lowercase y, capital V, capital D, lowercase i, capital S, the number three, capital N-R-S, lowercase a-c. And you can see how on the live preview, it pops that little video up here. So when they're doing this, they'll watch this video and then they'll understand, okay, I need to add that email and now you'll be able to control their Google My Business. All right, uh, we haven't created the the flow yet for this, but because because we want to create one more question, because again, if they answer no or not sure, they're not going to go to this question or this statement, they're going to go to the next one. All right, so let's go ahead and create that um, by clicking on the plus icon again. And I'm going to select short text for this one. And just so we're tracking, we're on 1D right now. You guys should be, uh, should mirror exactly as I have this. All right, and for this, I'm just going to say, confirm your business name exactly as it should appear. And why do we do this? Because we've already confirmed that they don't have access to their Google My Business listing, either they don't have one at all. Um, you know, do you already have a Google My Business page? We, and they said, no, we're not sure. So if they say, no, we're not sure, we're gonna first confirm ourselves as an agency just to make sure it doesn't exist. And then if it doesn't, which it probably doesn't, uh, based on their answer, then we're going to create it on their behalf. And in order to do that, we wanna make sure that we have their name exactly as it should appear, right? Uh, so they only see 1D if they answer no or not sure here. So let's do that now, let's go back to 1C, which was the, the question in the first place, the multiple choice answer. And we're going to click on logic jump. So I'll click that. 
And we have the question here, and then we're going to click on add a logic jump. And if the answer is yes, they're going to see uh, this answer, this jump here, 1.1, which is what we want. But in all other cases, we want to go right to 1D. So in other words, if the answer is yes, they will uh, get the statement about watching the video so they can give us access. And if they answer no, we're not sure, then we'll ask them to confirm their business. Once you've done this, you can click this X up here, and that will take you back into the builder. All right, so let's go back. All right, so you can see here, now we can click on test the logic by turning this on. And let's uh, go ahead and scroll down to that question. So here's one C and make sure, I'm, I guess it's gonna make me go through all of it. So let's just continue. Skip through, yeah, okay, skip through. All right, so I'll put, I'll uh, select yes now and we'll see 1.1. Perfect, let's go back. Let's select no. And you can see it's asking me for my business name instead of asking for this because it doesn't apply. Uh, and not sure would do the same thing as well. All right, so let's continue. Um, the next thing we wanna do, so we're at, we just finished 1D, right? They'll submit their business name in that case. And we're going to add 1E by clicking that. And 1E is going to be another multiple choice. And this time, we're going to ask if they have Google Analytics. So do you already have Google Analytics? OK, and similar choices are actually the exact same choices, yes. No, and not sure. And the process is, is the same as what we just did above, um, but before we can create that logic, we need to start creating the, uh, the flow here of the next uh, questions. So we'll hit the plus button again, and this time it's going to be a statement. And again, just for your own tracking purposes, this is 1.2 in the flow. And let's go ahead and just Give them some context. We'll say we don't need access to our Google Analytics account. Please watch the video below and complete before moving to the next step. And that's going to load up here as it catches up, and I'm going to find this other video URL, just as we did before. All right, uh, let me just get rid of that extra P in there. And I want to bold this, just to make sure that they understand this is important. I believe I did that above too, right? Yes, perfect. Um, so then we'll click the wrench icon. And we're going to add a description again. And it's going to be the same thing here. So I'm just going to copy this from above. And I'm going to paste that right here. Right, because I want to give them the same email to add in all these cases just to make it easy. And then we're also going to add a video URL again. Now, again, same thing as before. Feel free to use this exact same one or make your own. All right, so the URL is HTTPS colon slash slash y-o-u-t-u dot b-e slash capital b lowercase w s b capital c lowercase v capital h lowercase c number two and let me see what is this v lowercase v lowercase s all right so that is the video that we use for that all right, now, again, can't um, continue quite yet until we uh, make the next step here, which is going to be 1F. All right, so let's go and add 1F by clicking the plus icon. And this is actually going to be another multiple choice. 
And in this case, we're going to ask if uh, the Google Search Console. So do you already have Google? Let that catch up. I know I just had a typo there. All right. Search console question mark. All right. Same answers we've been using. Yes. No. Not sure. All right. So let's go ahead and, and make the logic from above. So 1E, if they already have Google Analytics and they say yes, we want to take them to 1.2. In all other cases, we're going to send them down to 1F. All right, so we go back up to 1E and we click on the logic tree, logic jump. We click on add logic jump. All right, so it's already pretty much preset for you here. If it's yes, it will go there in all other cases. And then we just select where we want them to go, which is going to be the last one we just created. Uh, do you already have a Google Search Console, one app? So we'll set that and then we'll close it. All right, so let's look back at what we did. All right, so that's one F. Now we want to create the next question here, which is going to turn out to be 1.3. And this is going to be a statement. And this is going to be tied to one F, depending on how they answer that. And this one is going to ask about, um, or it's going to uh, ask them for access to their Google Search Console if they answered yes here. All right, so let's say we will need access to your Google Search Console account. Please follow the instructions. Uh, actually, I'm just going to copy this. I'm going to say, let's just let that load up real quick. I'm just going to say the same thing. Please watch the video here. Before moving on to the next step. All right, and it should be bold, just like that. All right, and let's click on the wrench icon because we are going to add the description. Actually, sorry about that. Uh, no, that's correct. We want to add the description, and we also want to add the video URL. Uh, for the description, same thing. We're just going to copy what we had previously, because that's not changing. So the same email is what we want them to add for us. And then the URL for the video, uh, I'll give that to you in a second here. Just let me pull that up. Okay, so the URL is https colon slash slash y-o-u t-u B E slash capital R capital F lowercase s capital A A lowercase O Y capital P the number eight capital H and a zero. Just let that preview come up to confirm. Yes, so this is how they would add a user to their Google Search Console. All right, uh, so we still need to. Put in the logic here for 1F. I'm sure you guys are starting to understand how this works now. Uh, but before we do that, we want to go ahead and create the next question. So I'll go ahead and click that plus icon. And this one is going to be a website. So I'll scroll down and click and select website. And I want to say, please enter your website address. Uh, and then let's go ahead and make this required. All right, and before moving on, I just want to give a quick scan and make sure that I've required the ones that I want to require as mandatory answers. So email is mandatory, 1B is mandatory, 1C should actually be mandatory. I'm going to require that. Um, 1D is mandatory. But again, remember, they're only going to see 1D if they answered no or not sure. 1E, we're going to make that required as well, mandatory. Uh, 1F is going to be required.
required, it'll, uh, there it is, turn that on. All right, and then here we are now in 1G. So first, let's go back up to 1F and add the logic. All right, so we're at 1F and we're going to click on logic jump. And then click on add a logic jump. So if they answer yes to, do you already have a, this is this Google Search Console, then they will jump to us asking them to add us to that information. But if they don't, where do we want to go? We want to go to the, directly to the website. All right, and then we'll close that out. And let's scroll down to where we left off. All right, uh, perfect. So moving on, let's click on that plus button and we're going to continue asking more questions. This one's going to be a long text and just for your uh, tracking purpose, we're at one H here. And the question is, what is the street address of your business? All right, and we're going to click the wrench icon because we want that to be required. All right, and then click the plus button here. We move right on to the next question, long text again. And this one is, what is the city of your address? Let's let that catch up. And this one is also required. And then we'll click the plus button. And a long text again. And here we want to know uh, what is the state of your business address. And we will also make this required once it. Uh, Catches up, required, good. And lastly, for this part, we want to ask them their zip code. All right, so I'll select long text again. And really, you could actually select short text here. I just, uh, it, it's really not that important. I just give them enough room uh, to type. Uh, so 1K is the zip code. What is the zip code of your business address? And this is also required. And then we want to go ahead and click that plus button. And want to select phone number. And ask them, what is the business phone number? And then this is also going to be required field. So I'll select that. All right, uh, so let's just see where we're at. Okay, good. Now we're going to add a new question here by clicking on the, the bigger plus button. And in this case, I'm gonna scroll down and select question group. And this kind of just helps break it up a little bit for them so they're not getting worn out on just lots of uh, questions after question after question. So I want to give them a little information and, and give them some context here and say, the information you provide below will help us build the foundation for your SEO. Uh, let that catch up. And I want to uh, just hit shift and enter to go to the next line and say, click continue. You don't really necessarily need to do that, but um, I'm just giving them some direction here in case they're confused. Uh, so we'll create at the end of that. Okay, so we have a new set of questions to ask in here. So we're at two now, and I'm going to Click on the 2A that's already here. The question type is going to be, uh, let me see here. I think we use long text. I just want to 
double check that. Yeah. So we're going to select long text. And uh, we're going to put in enter all the types of services you offer, comma, and then example of uh, like mold removal. You know, it could be whatever is specific to the vertical or the industry you are targeting. And then I'm going to hit shift enter. And then in brackets, I'm going to put enter one per line. And dash and then shift plus enter. Now you can see here on the preview that type form by default says shift plus enter to make a line break. But I've just found that if you put this here also, it helps uh, direct the client um, to do that so they don't get confused. So essentially they're, they, they type their service options here and then shift enter one per line. So maybe mold removal, uh, water damage, could it be the next one, whatever it may be. Um, obviously, your business is going to be different than than uh, than what I'm showing here. So just specify that for your own business, of course. Okay, so uh, that's that question. And then the next one here is going to be another long text. And in this case, we're going to say enter all the cities and then in parentheses if more than one that you service. And I'm going to do the bracket again. I know I'm talking before. Ah, oh, it's all caps. That's annoying. Let me fix this. All right. So again, enter all the cities. Service. And then bracket again. Line. All right, once that catches up, that'll make sense. There it goes. Uh, let me fix that. Okay, so we've got services. Actually, let me go back and make sure that's required. Again, we see the little asterisk appeared. And then for cities, again, required. Uh, now, in many cases, a lot of your clients are probably only going to have one city. Um, there are scenarios where if you've got a larger client and they're, you know, they've got multiple locations or they, they just service, you know, if they're in smaller areas, they probably service multiple cities. That's fine. This is where they would list all of these as well. And again, it's the shift plus enter uh, requirement by type form in order to get these all in one line. All right, so that's 2B, it's required. And let's continue. So we're going to now find out about some of their uh, social media accounts. And for that, I'm going to select a yes or no question. And for your tracking, we're at 2C right now, so you should be at 2C as well. And let's go ahead and put, do you have a Facebook page? For your business. And with this being a yes or no question, we're going to have some logic. We're going to have a, have a logic jump built in as well. Um, so let's go ahead and put required for that. And before we can create that logic, we need to create whatever those next questions will be. So let's go ahead and create 2D, which is going to be short text. All right, and this one is uh, enter your Facebook page around here. I'm not going to make this one required because sometimes they may answer yes here and then, you know, instead of hitting back, they may realize they don't want to enter or they can't find it and they just skip it. That's fine. Sometimes that happens. We don't want to get them stuck either. Um, so this is going to... Um, so if they answer yes here, they're going to see this. If they answer no here, 
then they're going to go to the next one. So that's going to be uh, 2e. So it's going to create 2e, which is another yes or no. And this time we're asking about their Twitter page. Do you have a Twitter page for your business? And really, I made this one required up here. The social media doesn't necessarily need to be required. So you can actually turn that off if you want. Um, I mean, there's no real wrong or right way to do this, but uh, if you don't want to force them to have to answer certain questions, you can just leave it off because um, it's not mission critical, really. All right, so we have, do you have a Twitter page for your business? Let me just fix this typo here. Okay, so um, we can fix the logic now. So in 2C, if they answer yes, we'll send them here. If they answer no, we'll send them here, okay, to 2E. So let's go ahead and create that. Logic jump for 2C. Add the logic jump. Uh, if the answer is yes, then obviously we ask them for the URL. And in all other cases, let us jump to the Twitter answer uh, question. All right, and then we'll go ahead and close that out. All right, and let's go ahead and scroll down. All right, so 2E was the, the, the one for Twitter, so we're gonna move on to the next question, which is uh, short text and I'm going to say enter your Twitter page URL here. All right, so if they answer yes to 2E, they're going to see 2F. Let's go ahead and create 2G, which is another yes or no. So we're just getting the most important social accounts here. Just find out if they have them already um, and which ones they don't have. And this one we're going to ask about LinkedIn. Do you have a in page for your business. And then I like to put in parentheses here, not your personal profile. Because on LinkedIn, you can create, obviously your personal profile, but you can also create a company page listing, which is what we're interested in for this business. We don't really care about their personal profile. All right, so once that loads up, all right, uh, let me fix this typo. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and add the next question. And this one's going to be short text. And in this case, we wanna know the LinkedIn URL if they have one. Enter your LinkedIn page URL here. All right, now let's go ahead and fix some of this logic. So we've got 2E needs to send them to 2F if they answer yes, if they answer no, then they go to 2G. All right, so let's go ahead and fix this. Logic jump. And we'll add that logic jump. All right, so 2E is yes, and they will go there, perfect. If not, then we're going to send them to the LinkedIn question, right? So, yep, 2G. And let's go ahead and Close that. And I'll scroll, scroll down to the bottom here. And let's create uh, the next question, which should be 2i. And this is another yes, no. And this time we're looking for Instagram page. Do you have an Insta? Page for your business. Again, I put in those parentheses, not your personal profile. And I'll just let that load up. And once that's set, then we can go back to um, the LinkedIn 2G and create the logic for this. And you can save all this for the end, but I find 
uh, I've found that it makes it easier and more, it's, it's a little easier to um, do this and not get confused as to where the logic is coming from. Uh, because certainly the first time you do this, it could be a little overwhelming and just hard to kind of keep, keep up with everything. So for 2G, I'm going to uh, click on logic jump. And then add logic jump. All right, and this is fine. And then in all other cases, we're going to send them to 2i. Where is it? Right here. And then click X. Okay. So go down to the bottom. All right, so we've got LinkedIn jumps to 2H, perfect. And 2I, good. So the next question is going to be a short text. And this one is for the Instagram page URL. So enter your Instagram page URL here. And then I'm going to create another question, which is uh, 2K. And this is another yes or no. Do you have a help listing for your business? Question mark. Now, I know this is kind of a lot, but it's actually a very nice step-by-step -step process here if you follow along with what I'm doing. And it's a really great user experience for your client and just seems very professional. Um, you know, we used to use Excel sheets and Google Forms and things like that. And it does get the job done, but it's a little cumbersome. It's a little more back and forth. And in my opinion, it comes off as not as professional. And um, perception is reality. So I, I recommend going through these steps to create a really good experience for, for your client. Uh, this is the first real interaction they have after they've paid. The last thing you want is buyer's remorse. So when they see something like this, they realize they're dealing with someone who's done this before, they're professional, and they know what's going on. All right, so let's fix the logic. Uh, so where do we leave off? We did the logic for the LinkedIn page, yes. All right, so now we have to do the logic for Instagram. Logic jump here for 2i. And add logic jump. All right, so if it's yes, then we ask for it, obviously. And if they don't have one, then we send them to the last question we created, which was 2K. All right, let's go ahead and close that. And let's go down to the bottom. And click on that plus icon. Short text. And I'm sure you can guess by now that we're going to ask, enter your Yelp page URL here. And let me fix that. All right, so next question, click on the plus. And uh, another yes or no. And this time we're going to ask about their YouTube channel. Do you have? Hold on, I've got to catch up here a second. I messed up. Okay, there it is. Do you? A U T channel for your business. Okay. That looks good. And let's do the logic before moving on. So Yelp 2K needs to go to 2L. If it's no, it needs to go to 2M. All right, so we'll click on the logic jump here. Add the logic jump. And let's choose that question. Should be 2M, I believe. 
Yes, 2M. And we'll close it. And let's scroll to the bottom and add the next question, which is a short text. And this is where we ask them to enter you to channel URL. All right, and before we can add logic, we need to add, let's see, yes, we need to add, we're gonna add a new question here with the big button. And this is going to be another break in the way this is broken up. So we're gonna select question group. And let's put in, let's let them know they're almost finished because we don't want them to get discouraged that this is gonna take forever. Um, it goes a lot faster when you're not building it. This is quite a long process to build it, but on the front end, it's not too bad. Um, so here we're going to uh, just say almost. We just need to know some admin info now. All right. And before we can continue, uh, let's wait for that to display. There it is. So before we continue, we still have this logic jump that we didn't put in yet. So again, if they have a YouTube channel, yes, we want to send them to 2N. If it's no, then we're going to send them right to 3. All right, so we're going to go up to 2M, logic jump, add a logic jump. And in all other cases, we're going to jump on down to number 3. Right, so select that and click close it. All right, and let's go on down here. All right, so 3A, we can go ahead and click on that. And then the question type is going to be website. So let's go to the bottom and click on website. And in this case, we're at 3A now, just so you guys are tracking. The question is, what is the website URL for accessing your admin area? And then I'll hit shift and enter to go to a new line and say in parentheses, for WordPress, it is typically, actually, Fix that. Hold on. Uh, it typically ends in, and then put this in quotes, slash WP dash admin, end quote. And let me fix this spacing here. All right. So uh, this is not a, their, their website URL. We already have that. We want to know how to access their admin area for controlling their websites. We can edit content, add plugins, whatever it may be. Um, so we need to know what that URL is. Sometimes it's, most of the time it's wp-admin if, if it's a WordPress site. Um, it almost always is, they can change that. Um, if it's not a WordPress site, uh, it could be something else completely uh, different. So whatever that is, you just need to know it. All right, so uh, no logic jump required here at all. Uh, we're going to, um, we're going to require this field though, because we don't really want them to continue until we get that. This is very important. They may call you if they're confused that like, um, and not really understand what this is. So uh, just be prepared for that to talk them through it actually. Um, did I put the parentheses in there? It doesn't look right. Okay, here. I didn't close it out there. That's what I meant to do. All right, perfect. All right, so that is a required field and uh, related to this is the login information. So let's go ahead and select short text for this next one and ask what is the admin username? And this is going to be required as well. So I'll select required there and then I'll click the plus button 
and short text again. And we are at 3C, just so you're following along. And we want to ask, what is the admin password? Question mark. And again, this is also uh, a required field. All right, so let's move on, click the plus button. Uh, we're going to select long text here and ask or just make a statement if you know your FTP info, you can enter that below. Otherwise, just skip. All right, so let's give it a second for that. And uh, the next question is going to ask them about cPanel. Some people will just not even understand what that is. That's okay. Um, main thing is getting the admin info above. Um, FTP is, is great and cPanel is even better, but um, some people won't even have cPanel and that's not, that's fine. We just want to get it if they have it. So we're going to select long text here for this next one. 3E is where we're at. And we'll put it here. Know your cPanel info and enter that below. Otherwise, just skip. All right, and again, this is not required. 3D wasn't required, and um, 3E is not going to be required either. And uh, we are just about done here. Um, just let that go for a second. Uh, Find this URL I want to use here in one of these steps. I'm going to show you. Okay, so we're at three E's, last one. So I'm going to hit the plus button here. And this is another short text, or excuse me, another long text. And this one says, please enter a Google Drive link for any images slash videos you have as explained in this video right um, and I'm going to give you the video URL to use as well um, just give me a second on that let me pull it up um, before I do that I just want to um, add the description required yes and I'm going to scroll back up and I'm going to get one of the original ones that we did. Our email to add is because we're just going to use that same one again. Because they're going to be able to add our email address to access these uh, images and videos. So let's go ahead and add a video URL. And I'm going to give you a video that you can just share directly with them. Um, let me find it real quick. All right, so that URL is https colon slash slash y o u t u dot b e slash c, excuse me, that's lowercase c, capital U, capital B, capital N, N, lowercase h capital Z, the number one, the number zero, and then capital W, capital I. And this will explain to them how to create a Google Drive folder, how to add their images and videos to it, and then how to add your email address um, as a user to access this. Um, we don't require this as a field, so don't worry about that, but this is an added bonus if they have this information for you. A lot of times you can get this from their website directly, but sometimes it's best to let them give you everything that they have, okay? All right, so that is really the last question that we needed here, so we're going to close this up by clicking on add a new question here below. And this one is going to be a statement. And we're just going to say thanks. 
that's all the questions we have. We will review your order and contact you if we have any questions. All right, so one second, Let's uh, pull up here. It's not always the slag behind when you type, but I don't know why. Right now it's being a little slow for me at least. Uh, let's see. There it goes, it just caught up. Okay, uh, and then we're going to add, um, let me see if it's on this one. No. We're gonna add one more. And in this case, this is the thank you screen. So we'll select thank you screen. And I like to put the logo here again. Um, first, let's just put success, type that in. Your form has been submitted for processing. Okay. All right, and then let's hit the, the, the wrench icon here because I don't usually include a button here. There's no real need for it. I have no call to action at this point for them. And you can add the, keep the social share icons if you have your own. This is for your own business branding purpose, but I don't really worry about it. Um, what I do add though is that logo for my business again. So again, let's pretend this is my business logo. Obviously you would use your own here, um, but that is, uh, that is that. So. Um, I would review everything again, just make sure when you scroll through, you double check what is required and what is not required. And um, in the next video, I'm going to show you how to display this form on your website. So we're just going to embed this form so you can send them to yourdomain.com slash onboarding. And that's a URL that usually uh, I send them to immediately after payment. Uh, completes, they get redirected to my domain um, slash onboarding. And that is the URL that they see and they would see this form. And you can go through the beginning and uh, you can preview this and test it out yourself. Uh, you can use this preview button here and that will allow you to see it the way your client would see it. And you can just continue through. I'm just kind of scrolling through right now, but um, you can see that it's a very nice streamlined process here. And then all this information, uh, we'll, we will uh, put this into a few sources, but that will be covered in some other videos. So for now, let's go ahead and create your type form and have it ready to go. In the next video, we're going to take that form and embed it on your website. All right, I will see you in the next video.